I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to Microsoft Access and we're going to look at BOF and EOF, which are two properties of a record set that are very, very handy and you need to know uh, in order to uh, loop through and know when you're, you're done looping through the record set or, or if you're at the very beginning and if there are records or no records and things like that. And so uh, without further ado, let's get to BOF and EOF in Microsoft Access. Interested in coaching or one-on-one -on -one help on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. Okay, so this is the access file that we've been using for quite a few of our examples here. As you can see, I've got a very simple table uh, called Candy with uh, some, you know, chocolate and toffee and gumballs and uh, things like that and some pricing. And you can see there's 12 records in there and uh, very simple. So what I'll do is I'll go to the Create ribbon and I'm going to click on uh, New Module. And uh, in this module, what I'll do is I'm going to open that table as a record set and then I'm going to loop through and, and then I'll show you uh, how BOF and EOF uh, work uh, on the record set. So I'll create a simple sub here and I'll just call it uh, BOF EOF, that would be the name of our uh, of our sub routine here and what we can do is um, I'll add a comment at the top just to uh, just to say what, what it is that we're doing and uh, we'll say uh, to show how to uh, use BOF and EOF uh, in our record set here. So uh, what we'll do is um, I'll create a couple of variables here. Uh, I'll make one for our database just to reference our database and uh, and I'll create an RST uh, as a DAO.record set and uh, and then uh, what I'll do is we're gonna go ahead and open um, uh, we're gonna open our record set so first what we'll do is we'll reference the database um, and then we can set our RST variable equal to db.open record set and I'll just plunk in the name there candy uh, so this is like kinda like the simplest one of the simple uh, use cases uh, for for opening and closing a record set. At the end of my routine here, I will, you know, just for house housekeeping, you know, I'll set those equal to to uh, nothing, and I'll also I'll close our record set because that'll be the last thing that we want to do uh, as we loop through. And uh, and so uh, what we can do from there is. Um, well, we've got the record set open, and so we can actually just check to see, you know, are we are we at uh, beginning of file or end of file? And that's really what the meaning of, of those two properties is. Um, it's going to tell you when you're at the beginning, uh, before the first record, so you're at the very beginning or at the very end after the last record. So here we go. I've got, uh, I've done two debug dot print statements for the beginning and end and I'll just hit uh, I'll hit the run button there and as you can see it says false for both of those because as as you know looking at our table uh, when we looked at that it had records in it and when the record set opens it opens on the first record of the record set and so we we are not at the be very beginning or not at the very end because we haven't tried to go uh, you know move back one record or move past the end. And so if I sort of uh, take those out, um, I could put this into a loop. And so we could try that as well, um, just to demonstrate um, that we are, you know, uh, where we are. And so if I just do a move next on our record set for each time the loop goes around, then uh, it's also going to show uh, if it's if we're at the end of file or not. However, um, in this case, this move next is going to take us past the end, and we're, we'll get an error, and uh, that's when it tries to go past the last record. So, so as you can see, um, I printed out the name of the of the candy, and when we got to the you know the end here, it just said no current record because we're trying to go past the end of the record set. And that's where EOF can help us because otherwise we try looping forever, 
we tried to go past the end and as you can see I tried again and I can't go past the end there and uh, you could put in some some programming to make sure that the rst.close gets used there in the case that you get an error but we'll cover that in, in another video um, so what can we do about that well first we can sort of check and see that we actually are so every time that we've got a debug.print um, that uh, the record will not be uh, it won't be EOF yet because uh, because it hasn't tried to move past the end so if I hit go these will all be false and it'll still get an error and um, and so that's kind of what we expect to see and so uh, what can we do about that so we're going to go ahead and um, we'll these false ones down here th those are that's what we want to see but as soon as it becomes EOF which is a true and that happens at the moment that this line here goes um, uh, the moment that that goes past that that's when it's rst.eof and so uh, we're going to go ahead and change our do loop and we're going to say do until so at the moment that um, it becomes rst.eof that's when we're going to exit our loop and and avoid the error that we saw there so I'll go ahead I'll delete our output there and so that we can see the new output when it goes so now when I click run you'll see we do not get an error and you can see it has hit all of the rows where where of course EOF is false at that moment when you are able to reference the row and at the moment it moves past that on the very last one it the record set becomes EOF um, the property becomes true and then it exits the loop and we do not see the error and then the code continues on after that and that's exactly what we want to see uh, in in that case so you might be wondering, you know, how can I see when it, you know, EOF is true and BOF is true? How can I see that in my code, you know, in the code output? And we can do that. So I'll create a new, I'll copy and paste the same table structure into a new uh, table called candy empty. So now you can see if I, you know, if I look at that, it, you know, there's no rows in there. So that first row there, that's a new row that hasn't been created yet. Um, and so this is an empty, it'll be an empty record set. And, um, and so now if I, um, you know, if I go and I change it, I can actually get rid of all this loop stuff. And I can do kind of similar to what we did before, where I can say, you know, open my record set. I'm going to change the name to candy empty. And then I'll, I'll put some text to see. Well, if we open an empty record set, then what does, you know, BOF and EOF show us? And uh, this is what it looks like here. So I'll say, uh, you know, debug.print, uh, BOF, and then we'll grab our, our property there, rst.bof, and uh, I'll put a comma, and then I'll put uh, the EOF as well, and then I'll grab that, and I've concatenated a string here together, uh, to give us a little message output. So if I hit uh, run, you'll see now it says those are both true uh, because there are no records in this record set and so we are therefore at, we're at the beginning of the file and we're at the end of the file at the same time. Um, if I run this on just the candy table that has records in it, then you can see uh, it outputs false for both of those because uh, now that we've opened the candy record, it has the very first record and the record set opens on the first record and therefore it's not it's not before the beginning or past the end and uh, that tells us uh, that shows us how we can use uh, BOF and EOF so if I open the table here you can see it's very similar it opens on the beginning record and when we loop through to the end um, it's still not EOF until you go past the end Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use BOF and EOF in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Click the bell when you see the bell so you'll be notified of any new content. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.